Someone sent me a clip that Steve Harvey just put out on Twitter saying that the reason why God hasn't made you rich is simply because you haven't asked him for it. And of course, this extends past money and goes to all of your unanswered prayers. So now if you're hearing this and you think that his claim just feels off, you're not alone. I think I know why. Let's take a look. You know, the biggest scripture that changed my life is the smallest scripture. It's in James 4 and 2. You have not because you ask not. It's that simple. Y'all ain't never asked God, could you be rich? Most people ain't rich today because you ain't never asked God, could you be rich? Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you ain't never asked God, could you have it? So, as you just heard, Steve Harvey believes that God wants to give you everything you want, but the reason why you haven't gotten everything you want is simply because you haven't asked. <laughs> The greatest answer I've ever heard. <laughs> but if he's right about the fact that God wants to give you everything you ask for, then why do you still have unanswered prayers? It seems to me that the answer would have to be either that there's something wrong with how you're praying, there's something wrong with God, or there's something wrong with you. According to Steve, he thinks that it's the first problem, that there's something wrong with how you're praying since you're just not asking God for what you want. But if you do ask God for it, that means that the problem either has to be with God or the problem has to be with you. And when I've seen people conclude that the problem has to be with God, then they either conclude that God didn't come through for them or they conclude that God just doesn't exist. But if they don't believe that and they still do believe that God exists, then the last option would be that the problem is with us. And this leaves us feeling really bad and down on ourselves and really frustrated not knowing what to do to fix ourselves. Because we all have areas that we can clean up, our first instinct is to think that the reason why is because we must not be living a good enough life or that God isn't answering our prayers because we don't feel close enough to God for whatever reason. This leads us into places where we spend our time trying to make the right deals with God and promise them that we'll try to be better in some area, or we spend our time trying to generate the right feelings of closeness with God through worship or church or whatever. But maybe the problem isn't with how we pray and the problem isn't with God and the problem's not with us. But instead, maybe the problem is really with Steve Harvey's understanding of God. What? Think about it this way. For Christmas this year, my seven-year-old son wanted an Android phone since his friends all at school had phones. Now, I knew that there weren't no way that that was going to happen. I studied the effects that excessive screen time can have on kids' growth and development, so I told him that I wasn't going to get him one. So now, why didn't my son get an Android phone for Christmas? Was it because he didn't ask? <laughs> No, he did ask and I still said no. Was the problem me, the person he was asking? Was it because I didn't want to bless my son or that I didn't exist? No, of course not. I did want to bless my son and I love to see him happy, but I still didn't get him an Android. And lastly, was the problem him? Was there something wrong with my son? Was he not good enough? Did I need him to feel really, really bad about some things and commit to pleasing me more? No, the reasons weren't any of those things. The real reason why is because I'm an Apple guy, and no son of mine would be caught dead with an Android in his hand. <laughs> I'm kidding. The real reason is because I want what's best for my son. And even though my son thinks he knows what's best for him, he doesn't know what I know, and so he can't fully understand the things that I understand. I know what's best for him better than he does a lot of the time because I see and understand things that he simply doesn't. So now getting back to what Steve Harvey said, when he quotes the Bible here, I think that he's wrong biblically, and I'm thankful that he's wrong on this. It's true that if we pray according to his will, then we will get everything that we pray for, but if we were just to give our kids everything that they ask for, then they'd be dead in a week. We don't give them everything they ask for because we love and care for them, and we know what's best for them, which is the same reason why God doesn't give us everything that we ask for. Now, one thing I found interesting when I was studying some deconversion material about the reasons that people gave for why they left the faith was that they claimed to leave because they were taught that God or the Bible promised them things that never came to pass. What's interesting is that I realized that virtually all of the things that they believe that the Bible promised us actually weren't promised to us in the Bible. Take what Steve Harvey said for an example. He quoted James 4.2 in order to say that God will make you rich, but he doesn't quote the context or even the next verse. The next verse says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. And that sounds like a pretty important part for Steve to leave out. Read, Steve. So Steve isn't given the full biblical view on what the Bible says about how to make money. And if you're interested in what the Bible really says about building wealth, check out this video by my friend Ruslan as he gives a more biblically faithful answer. But the next time you find yourself wondering why God isn't answering your prayers while forgetting that God knows what's best for us, what are you going to say? It's going to be number one on YouTube, but... <laughs> what do you mean?